Hi, and welcome to the Netocratia podcast. This is going to be an episode in English. I'm Ivan, the founder of Netocratia. And with me today, I have Tade Bogatai, who is the co-founder of Card Boss. Tade, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Uh, just a quick intro. So we're going to talk about uh, abandoned cards, how to help them with SMS, as well as your uh, founder's journey. And just as a short intro, can you say a little about yourself and also what Card Boss does? So I'm the co-founder of Cardboss. I used to be a developer. I had my own development company as well. We did a lot of uh, e-commerce websites. And from there, the idea of implementing text messages into websites came. And with abandoned cards, which is one of the main problems for e-commerce companies, especially because you put so much effort and money in the advertising, to get the customer journey from the product page to the checkout. And then they leave the site, you know, that's kind of a big pain. Um, because emails don't have that good of an open rate. Text messages do. They actually have a 99% open rate, 93% open rate within the first three minutes, which is quite nice, compared quite to, nice especially yeah. compared <laughs> to emails. Yeah, I mean... Uh, Yeah, so the idea grew from there, and my business partner and I started working on Card Boss, and yeah, from there on, it just grew and grew and grew. I mean, the basic idea is to just implement Card Boss into your website, and that's it. Uh, everything is ready to use, and you just need to select what kind of messages you want to send, and done deal. Awesome. Th that's the basic. Uh, Card boss introduction, actually. So, so a straight, but we're probably going to... Uh, what? Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to go into detail. It's, it's a very straightforward product, actually. And like unlike a lot of products that are maybe uh, US-based or focused on the US market, uh, your product is very uh, localized as well. So, for example, e-commerce players in Croatia or other parts of the EU can easily like implement it and also uh, localize it to their users, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the thing that a lot of products out there that do the same kind of thing as Cardboss does are based just for one language. As for the EU regions, for example, especially a lot of uh, e-commerce businesses in Europe do work in multiple countries. So that's why we decided to not only have the solution multilingual, but we automatically detect the language of the recipient and he always receives the languages in his own language. And you don't need to do anything about it. Awesome. So it's not like I'm going to abandon a, a cart of a web shop in Croatia and then get an SMS in English or German. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. If your phone number is, uh, if you're in Croatia, you're going to receive the message in Croatian language. Great. Uh, and hopefully um, our, our viewers don't uh, abandon this podcast. So I would urge you to subscribe to Netocratia Podcast on YouTube, Google, Google um, Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so on. There's so many platforms. Do not abandon this video. Subscribe uh, instead. And now back to our story about the abandoned carts. You, you mentioned that Ban carts are a really big problem for e-commerce. So I would expect that uh, the problem is I come to a web shop, I go to Amazon or whatever, I add things like clothes or books or whatever. And for some reason, or actually I have a very specific example, I uh, added a few books and then I just realized, crap, I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to read this because I have a one-year-old boy um, and I just left. And that's it. Those books are now in my cart in Amazon and they haven't gotten that revenue. And of course, Bezos is now crying because he really needs that those free books sold. Um, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge problem, e-commerce. Um, are there, what, what are the usual methods? So it's email notifications. How do e-commerce owners usually try to uh, resurrect these pur purchases? Yeah, like emails are the way to go. I mean, at least that was uh, the way to go for years now. Uh, but there's one problem with emails, you know, the open rate is under 20% for abandoned carts, even lower. I mean, for abandoned cart email notifications and the click-through rate is under 2%, you know, so that's not the best solution. Um, and a lot of people don't even open emails, you know, or they open them after weeks later on for example, older elderly people. 
Uh, the other option is retargeting. You know, for example, you do retargeting on Facebook or other uh, platforms. That's the second way to go about it. And then it's kind of a done deal. You can't do anything more about it. I mean, you can't call them uh, because, you know, it would be a good idea, but you can't do that. It's not scalable. So with text messages, that's actually kind of the most uh, direct way of getting in touch with your people that abandon your card. Uh, because there's, I think there's around 70% of visitors that come to the checkout page, abandon it. And one of the reasons is lack of time or changing your mind at the le- very last second. Then there's also hidden costs. For example, you know, the shipping uh, time or the shipping cost, payment methods, if they're not there, they, you can't you know, complete the order. So you can actually just uh, use text messages, for example, to fix those problems, giving a discount or stuff like that. Or you mentioned shipping as an issue, yeah. for example. So if if shipping was a problem, again, Jeff wouldn't ship the books to me for free. Um, is there any way to rectify that as the e-commerce owner through the SMS? Can I give them a coupon or something? What what has worked for your other customers? The thing is that uh, there's multiple options how you can go about it, but the best one is offering free shipping. So you can just tell them like, hey, uh, I know you left this in your cart. Don't leave it, complete your order, and here's your free shipping. Uh, and there is, there is the Card Boss solution does work via coupons, but you don't need to do them. Card Boss generates them automatically. And they are also implemented, embedded to the card automatically. So you don't need to write it again inside, you know, all those code and stuff like that. It's fully automatic. So I click on the link that you send. I'm taken to my cart. And for example, the coupon code is already activated in in the solution. Yeah, yeah. And also your uh, information that you previously entered in the checkout form, it's already there. So you just click complete order. That's it. Now, as an e-commerce owner, that sounds like a very practical solution that I would want. Yeah. As a user, on the hand, while I, I can understand the usefulness, when you say SMS, I'm like, t- like in theory, getting SMSs, especially like promotional SMSs, has on one hand, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say uh, destroyed my faith in, in, in the communication channel, but it like I would say that most people aren't really sure if SMS is the right way of connecting to their users. Um, Do users get annoyed by getting an SMS like that? What's, what have you seen as, as, as much as you can share? Yeah, I can share share a lot of info here and I'm going to take a bit more time here to elaborate. Go for it. So what you were talking about actually was probably those promotional mess text messages that you occasionally get. And those are actually annoying, and the conversion rate there isn't as high. I mean, isn't that high? Uh, people actually do unsubscribe quite often. But what we do is we do abandoned card text messages. That's like five minutes or 10 minutes or a few hours after the card is abandoned. And those aren't annoying, actually. People do like receiving them. Uh, and it, it's not that we did a study of contacting people that received messages. Of course, that's not okay. Uh, but we checked the unsubscribe rate. And on 2,000 people contacted, uh, one unsubscribes. So the, the percentage of unsubscribed people is really, really low. Why do you think that is? Is it just because like people understand that, oh, okay, I got an SMS notification that I'm, I've am i abandoned the card. It's not a promotion. It's it's not like I'm going to get that again if I don't abandon the card. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. You, you're actually, you're in the mindset of buying still. You're not surprised by the text message. I mean, you are in one way, but in another way, you still know that you were thinking about buying that stuff. So it's actually a positive experience to a certain degree. And to give you an example, because there are different kinds of shops. For example, you've got brands that sell online and you've got, uh, well, companies that sell just like random stuff. Uh, I mean, uh, 
more cheaper products, low-end products. Um, with those kind of companies that sell random stuff, the return of investment is roughly around 2,400%, which is really good. Uh, but when you look at the results of brands, like com real brands that have a online following uh, devoted customers, the return of investment is around 6,000%. Really so, good. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. I mean, the thing is that people that are really devoted to the brand, they enjoy getting contacted uh, via email, via text messages. Everything is good. Just, just that the text messages really perform amazing. Um, and one more thing that's interesting is that we collaborate with, I mean, we work really close with one big brand. Um, and when they launched their new website, people contacted them, like said, like, yeah, we like your site. Could you change this? You know, they had a lot of ideas. They communicate, their buyers, their customers communicate with them via social networks and stuff like that. And when they started using text messages, no one complained, you know, they do get uh, contacted by them in a way that, hey, I did receive your text message, uh, but could you rather give me a different kind of uh, special offer or stuff like that? Mm -hmm. It's the only thing that they do. I mean, they get... Uh, it's not uh, about the reply. channel. It's not about the S SMS as, as a communication channel. It's more of the content that they send. So, oh, I don't want free shipping. Give me this or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's really not annoying. I mean, people honestly do enjoy getting them. So one more better thing is that everybody knows how to receive a text. I mean, knows how to read a text message. Everybody, the elderly people as well, because emails, as I explained earlier, are a bit of a problem. Have you tried other channels in, in that sense? Or, for example, um, messaging apps like WhatsApp or Messenger or something like that, or consider them? Uh, we're still considering using those. Uh, it's something in the pipeline, but currently text messages are the thing that we're focused on completely. How does it work as far as user permission? So for example, uh, you do send me an SMS because I banned my car, but do I give you special permission? I obviously have to, to leave my phone with the, the cart. Uh, does the system inform the user, oh, if you amend your cart, you're going to get an SMS? How, do you, how does... How does the e-commerce owner communicate that to their customers? So you've got, um, for example, because um, Cardboss can be easily implemented with WooCommerce and Shopify, and we do have a custom software development kit as well. But uh, when you install Cardboss on your website, you have the option to show a checkbox for consent. And that uh, checkbox is shown underneath the phone field. And that's it. And if users, uh, I mean, visitors click that they consent, then they receive the text message. I mean, you can have the checkbox shown or not. I mean, if you don't have it shown, then everybody's going to receive the text message, of course. I'm just thinking of it. I, I reserved a flight recently, I'm going to fly to a conference in like two years or whatever. So that's going to be fun. But I, I just realized like they wanted to literally like make me pay to get an SMS about uh, changes to my itinerary and everything. So yeah, people in some cases would pay to get an SMS if the information is important enough, right? Or useful enough. Maybe we should implement something like that as well. From card boss to fly boss. Uh, but let's let's get back to your origin story actually and how you created this problem. Because one thing that I really um, fascinated by and which was kind of weird at the beginning is Card Boss, again, is very straightforward. You have plugins for the popular e-commerce platforms. It's very plug and play, right? Um, how did you come about with such a product? Why is it so simple uh, simple to use? I mean, it's, it's, it's very like, you, you don't make your users do a lot of work to get it going, right? The thing is, it's, it's really easy to explain our solution which is a big bonus. Um, and we're just focused on fixing just one problem currently. I mean, just fixing the abandoned cart rate. Uh, I mean, conversions. So that's the main goal. And when we started thinking about how to develop the solution, what kind of feature should it have, you can do all of those stuff, you know, uh, 
post-purchase text messages. I mean, we do have post-purchase text messages, but you can do newsletters as well and stuff like that. There's a multitude of options. But in the end, when we launched the product on our first testing uh, subject, we realized that they don't want to take the time to even test it out. Even if we gave them free credits, we gave them everything, but they didn't even take the time to install it initially. Why not? I mean, in, in WooCommerce, it would literally be like, install plugin, done. Not really. I mean, for example, if, if I give you the option to uh, install Cardboss, then you need to write the text messages. You need to translate the text messages. Um, you probably would need to also set up what countries you want to send the text messages to, where not to, whatever. Um, and with Cardboss, we then realized that we need to just make a little plug and play solution for the basic uh, user, for not the tech savvy user, but, but just for a user or a company owner that has zero time on his hands. Th did that mean removing features also? It, it didn't mean removing features. It meant just thinking really hard on what features to implement that are crucial uh, and mostly focus on when adding a new feature, add it in a way that the new user will have zero time wasting on changing the settings or whatever. So for example, the text messages are now prepared up front and translated to every language that we offer sending. You can also write, of course, your own text messages. But that's the basic idea, that you literally just plug it in and play, and that's it. Uh, just write in the API code, and you're connected. So the idea is here, like, just get it to work finally, just not customizing it or whatever. Um, when we talked about this before, you said that Apple um, influence this decision, just you like Apple products, uh, you like your Mac and so on. Uh, how did Apple help influence this kind of thinking about the product? Just the simplicity of use. You know, I mean, when I open up my phone or my computer or whatever, it's, it's just so straightforward. I don't need to think about, I don't know, basic settings, uh, connecting to Wi-Fi. everything just works out of the box. And I, we, both me and my business partner were quite big Apple fans. And we just realized that, yeah, that, that's the thing. You don't need a lot of settings. That Those are just distractions from uh, knowing how to use the system. And another thing is that we did a lot of testing with different kinds of text messages, different kinds of customer journey and everything. And in the end, I mean, who knows better than us? I mean... We did so much testing and we still always check the statistics, what's performing better, what's worse. And we just set it up, set up the whole system in a way that it's ready to go as optimized as possible. You can customize it to your own needs, of course, but in the end, you don't need to. You really do not need to. So yeah, just plug it in and play. And So basically the idea is to get, um, to do like, 70% of the work that the customer would have to do themselves to make it good enough. And then if you want to customize it, you're free to do it, but this will work out of the box, right? Yeah, yeah. You said you were a developer. You said that you developed a lot of e-commerce websites and so on. Why do you think that then a lot of developers don't go with that um, way of thinking? In a lot of cases, and this may go to the whole Android versus Apple uh, or Android versus iPhone debate, like, oh, Apple has its walled garden. They don't give us um, the, the customization options and so on. And I would tend that a lot of developers, a lot of engineers agree with that. They would prefer to have an Android, not an Apple product. What would you suggest to them if they're building their own products now? I mean, I completely understand the passion, you know, to over-engineer something, add extra new features. I mean, because you're interested. I mean, you're, in a way, it's your child, you know, you want to throw it and add new features and bells and whistles. But then you start considering your own personal time, in a way. 
I mean, why waste time developing something that maybe 3% of users will actually really use? The other thing is it's also, I mean, it's server related. I mean, the more features that you have, the more server costs you have in the end. Um, but the most important feature is, I mean, reason is that if you add 10 new bells and whistles and features and everything, imagine a user that's not really tech savvy and but it does use card boss he's gonna get lost in the features he won't know how to use them he's gonna mess things up so it's best to keep the amount of features to a minimum just what they really need to have and another thing is the user experience imagine that you have 20 different features then the complete user interface needs to be really really simple to understand when we started, I mean, when we got a few larger clients uh, with Cardboss, uh, we noticed that we got a lot of uh, questions regarding how do you put this, I mean, how do you set this up? How do you set that up? Um, those weren't tech savvy people uh, that I asked us those questions. But still, you could notice that the design uh, of the user interface really must be as simple and clean as possible because otherwise people just don't know. I mean, they get distracted quite easily. And I think that a lot of uh, e-commerce owners uh, could agree when they check their websites with Hotjar or stuff like that, that people just get lost. I mean, we, um, in the different company, the web development company, business companies told us that people call them and ask them for the price of the product, even though the price was like, it, it, it's there, man. Like, what are you talking about? And they couldn't see it. I mean, they just got lost. And that's the whole idea. I mean, make a solution, a software or whatever, that's more, think of it in a way to less is a lot more. And then when you, Think about adding a new feature. Don't be excited about adding a new feature, but think of it in a way of spending time. And if you spend a week developing that feature, is it even worth it really in the end? How do you consider new features now, having that mindset in place? If you want to keep the product simple, Obviously, through time, if you're considering, for example, WhatsApp or any other feature, how do you think through, should we add this feature? Should we not add it? I ask this because um, I, I had a podcast uh, recently um, with a head of a B2B product company. And he mentioned how one company in Croatia, specifically Repsley, when they entered the larger market, the US specifically, they actually... Um, removed some features to make the product more friendly to a broader group of users. Uh, how do you think that just like time will influence Card Boss? How will you keep the product simple while implementing new features? I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> I mean, no, um, the thing is that me and my business partner, we do those brainstorming sessions and at the beginning, we used to talk for six hours straight. Uh, and even more days, you know, like it, it wasn't just one day and talking. It's like we really brainstorm heavily, you know, constantly. And that's one thing. And just opposing each other, you know, trying to say, no, it's like this or just having a different mindset. Um, but in the end, the idea is to each new feature that's added has to be really simple and uh, integrated seamlessly. So, for example, if we would consider adding uh, WhatsApp uh, to Cardboss, um, it would be perhaps just one checkbox. For example, send a WhatsApp uh, message first, and if it's not opened, then send the text message. That would be it, just a simple checkbox. Not a lot of configuration, as least amount of configuration actually as possible. Again, you would make it easier for users, although it might be a bit complex on your part. It has to be simple for, for the user, seamless experience. But that's actually a good uh, explanation. Yeah, we, we do a lot of development on our part and so that the users don't uh, have a lot of problems in the end. 
What do you tell users when they ask for a feature, especially if they're a big client? And this is an issue I think a lot of, especially B2B product companies have coming from this part of the world. You get a big client. Uh, as you mentioned, you have a couple of really large clients. And there's always that one moment when they might approach you and say, oh, cool, but you know, we have this one thing that would really make our life easier. Could you implement that? That's quite interesting. Uh, I think we have roughly around four or five really, really large uh, clients. And none of those actually come to us and say, hey, we would need this and this and this. And even when they do, it's it's such a minor thing, you know, nothing specific. Uh, most of the smaller uh, clients, they they are the ones that tend to come and say like, hey, it, it would be amazing if you would have this option as well. Um, Why do you think that is? That's weird. Well, I think that um, overthinking a lot of times. Uh, thinking how good it would be if you could send also newsletter text messages and whatever. Newsletter text, yeah. yeah. Uh, and they just try to optimize, I mean, not optimize, they try to add as many new options to their marketing channels as possible. Uh, but that is a good thing to do, but um, slowly, as slowly as possible, so that you can actually test it out, see the results optimize that one thing that you're currently using and then go to the next one. But a lot of smaller companies tend to just grab everything and then not even know what what's better. Or not. And what. then you get customers calling to ask where the price is on the page because you had so many plugins to the website, there's nothing's, nothing's visible anymore. Yeah, exactly, you know, exactly. Uh, but we do uh, write down each and every request literally each and every request and we've got it all listed and yeah. And then we occasionally, I mean, occasionally once a month or something like that, when we were considering adding a new feature, we check which one is the one that's really uh, best suited for all of our users. Um, continuing the, 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 the story of how you don't do some things. One of the things that uh, you don't do, you're not global or you started with a global mindset, or not a global mindset, you started by doing like uh, global outreach and so on, but then you decided A, to focus on new customers and B, to do it on a country by country basis. Can you go for that thinking why it makes sense for you and why it makes sense for customers as well in the end? Well, so we, we're not, uh, how do you say, I think it's called venture capital. We're, we don't take any- You're not VC, uh, you know? fund, uh, VC funded Silicon Valley startup. <laughs> A SUNY corn. <laughs> yeah, we were just, uh, at the beginning, there was just two guys, you know, me and Damian. So, and we were thinking about, okay, we started in Slovenia because that's where we're from. Um, and that was an easy market because we had a lot of uh, connections, a lot of, we knew a lot of people. Uh, and then we started like, okay, we're doing really good. We should just reach out and what we realized is that when you reach, I mean, when you try to go globally, um, that's not the thing, you know, you, you need that personal touch. Uh, although we thought that we could just do sponsored blog posts and everything, and we do get a lot of traffic from that part, but um, it's a lot better when you focus on one country at a time, because that way you can, um, it's a different way of communication, you know. It's more personal because we do calls uh, to companies and communicate with them like in that way. And also each country, not that, it's not that specific, but each country does have its own, uh, how do you say, requirements, for example. While Slovenia had some, uh, Italy had others, Croatia has different ones as well. So. That way we can focus on the requests of our new users and implement them uh, based on their needs. So it's a matter of, again, um, customizing the communication toward the user to solve their specific uh, problem. What did you do in, in the first phase when you tried to do go global? You, you mentioned sponsored posts, stuff like that. Uh, did you just like do e-commerce websites? What, what did global mean in that sense? Uh, global meant actually uh, reaching out to YouTubers, uh, reaching out to blog posts, uh, blog sites, uh, um, 
influencers, marketing agencies, larger ones. Uh, that was actually the thing what, that we did. And then you realize that YouTube isn't that best. I mean, not YouTube per se, but uh, YouTubers, you know, that do like, uh, hey, check this out. Uh, that's not the best solution, actually. At least it wasn't the best solution for us. Uh, the best solution is just going country per country and communicate uh, as best as possible. And then you can focus on again on the on the local language support and stuff like that, which brings us back to that question. So you're you're not focused on global markets. You're focused on the EU, and specifically being useful for different uh, countries. How did that come about? Was it again from you starting in Slovenia, knowing that oh, okay, shops in Slovenia need a specific solution uh, in this sense? Well, I mean, in a way, I wouldn't say that we're focused on the EU per se. But uh, companies that operate in multiple countries, those are our target audience. I mean, those are the companies that would honestly need our solution. Um, that's the main reason because, I mean, we did develop the solution because of the companies that we knew that operate in multiple regions across EU. Um, and that's why we did it that way. But in the end, it's just logical. If you, because you think about it, I mean, companies that, I mean, software solutions that offer this kind of service are based on just one specific language. Most, uh, uh, a lot of solutions actually even offer just one site. You know, you need to have another account for a different site. Oh. But, yeah, but the companies, I mean, our solution is just like, I think we have one company that has over 500 different websites connected to that, 400 or 500, something like that. Really just an insane number, you know, they have landing pages and stuff like that. So why do, uh, why do you think that really insane? Why, why do you think that then these other companies focus just on like, for example, one website? Is it because like they're in a market like the US when where, oh yeah, you have one website, that's fine. That's That's how most shops work. They're not used to, Exactly. Yeah. That's specifically that because the in the U, uh, U.S. you've got just one language, you don't and the market is huge, so you don't need much more than that. But that's interesting, just from a standpoint of how I'm always used to a lot of, especially founders, either technical or non-technical, like looking at, for example, startups on TechCrunch or other tech channels, seeing, oh, that's how you do it, and it's mostly U.S. companies. And they forget that there are specifics where you could find, you could create a product that's not just for the usual U.S. customer. It's actually for customers around the world. For you specifically, it might work in the EU or other continents because there are multiple languages, as you said, and people use SMS more maybe than other kinds of messaging. Look, um, I when we started Cardboss, when we started growing, and I got really excited about expanding to uh, globally. You know, you start uh, checking out different uh, tutorials on how to push your uh, product out. You start learning about how to uh, how the product per se should be, how to present it and everything. And everything seemed logical. But then when you when you start implementing it, it doesn't work. I mean, it. It does work for a, like on average, it does work the way that they uh, advertise. I mean, how they sell you the, how you should uh, expand your product. But then I realized, well, we're quite specific. Um, and I realized that it's best to just go your own way, you know, I mean, yeah, keep in mind what you learned and everything and do implement it in a certain degree. But honestly, I mean, this product is specific and uh, you can't advertise it like typical. I mean, for example, if you sell online products, what you do is you just push it in the marketing, uh, push it in Facebook ads and check the ROAS. Mm -hmm. But um, with um, a SaaS solution, it's not that. You need to be really specific. You need to know your product and you need to know your uh, customers. And then you need to figure out how to even share your product. I mean, share it, ex explain it, um, find people, I mean, everything. And you need to go your own way. Following up on the 
on the thing about knowing your customers, you obviously know uh, your e-commerce customers and Cardboss doesn't just like do abandoned carts. What would you suggest to e-commerce owners as far as SMS marketing goes? Uh, just because as you mentioned, I'm sure that a lot of you did the same thing as you did. They, they Google uh, guides and articles about marketing their web shops, everything seems logical. But from your own experience and experience with so many customers, what would you suggest to them when it comes to an SMS marketing strategy beyond just doing abandoned cart um, resurrection? Well, I mean, if, uh, well, uh, uh, well, abandoned carts are the way to go. Um, Post-purchase text messages are something that are, is very useful, but you need to find a way to uh, implement them in your marketing channel in a way. And it isn't the best solution for every company. You know, brands can do wonders with post-purchase text messages or win back text messages as well. Those are the text messages that you get like two weeks after you completed an order saying, hey, thanks for being a loyal customer. Here's 20% off on everything that you buy today. Um, so post-purchase text messages and win back text messages is something that brands can really uh, do wonders with it's not the best solution for uh every kind of a company e-commerce company uh and then there's the thing that everybody wants us to i mean a lot of our users want us to implement and they, that's uh newsletters mass uh, sms sending and yes we are gonna do that but uh the results as we did our uh research aren't as good as 6,000% return of investment, you know, uh, the results are quite lower. So I, I would recommend if going, the, if you want to start using text messages for in marketing, I mean, for your company, start with abandoned cards and think about what kind of customers you have and what kind of products you sell. And based on that, test out post-purchase text messages, implement it in a way that is really useful for, for your customers. For example, you, what you can do is you can either send them just one product for, hey, interested in this perhaps, or you can send them to a page where you have like four different products and just say like, choose whatever you want. Um, but the only thing that I would also add is, um, just activate two or three text messages. That's it. You, you don't need to activate like, 10 messages, you know, then you become spammy. Uh, just go slowly, step by step. And in the end, I mean, we actually have everything in Carbos prepared and you've got those recommendations, like this is the best way to go about it. Just do that and see what, what the results bring you. Awesome. That's a, that's a good way of thinking about SMS marketing, definitely, especially because, because of the, all the spammy things that a lot of companies did beforehand. It got kind of a bad rep. But now, obviously, this is something that's useful and people can use it and implement it and experiment it in a way that's useful to their customers. Now, I'm sure you don't want uh, people SMSing you with questions. Uh, where can they reach out to you if they have any questions, maybe are interested in using Cardboss? Is it email? Is it some other channel? Yeah, email is the best way to go about it. Usually, we reply within a couple of hours, so that's the best way. Or, I mean, personally, they can contact me on LinkedIn. That's the best way. I mean, but I do prefer just send me an email. Don't send me a text message. <laughs> they can send you a text message if you abandon a cart on their website. That's fine. Yes, they, <laughs> that they can because I'm going to get a discount. So why not? <laughs> a discount or free shipping, as you mentioned. Uh, Tari, thank you so much for sharing your experience with SMS marketing and also how to save abandoned carts. I'm sure that a lot of e-commerce owners will, will find useful, but I hope also that a lot of founders uh, find a couple of ideas of how to run their own products. Because again, uh, having a straightforward product uh, really does make sense. And I'm expecting you didn't expect Cardboss to be such a, such a success and go in such a route from something that basically from afar, again, to me, it seemed like, oh, it's a simple plugin, but again, a very useful, useful solution to customers. Yeah, I mean, uh, what I didn't expect was the results Cardboss brings, you know, that, that, that's the thing that I'm truly amazed. I mean, getting 6,000% return of investment is... It just works. 
Awesome. It works. Yeah, it, just it works. works. Awesome. If you want to uh, implement uh, Card Boss on your own website, go to cardboss.io uh, uh, or, of course, uh, contact Tadi, not by SMS, by email or uh, on LinkedIn. And also, unfortunately, we don't send SMSs uh, about Netocracia podcast. That's something that we might, uh, we might, if, if you stop listening to the podcast now, we'll send you an SMS. Can we implement that? Maybe. You, you never know. Uh, we'll try. Uh, until then, subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. Click on the notif notification bell. Uh, subscribe on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or something else. Yeah, we need to implement SMS or WhatsApp at some point. Well, we'll, we'll see about that. There's time. There's time. Uh, and uh, please, in the comments, give us your feedback about using SMS uh, in marketing, either on Etocratia or YouTube. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, we'll hear each other in the next episode on Netocracia podcast. Daddy, thank you so much. Thanks. Bye-bye.